<laughs> I don't want to have the birds and the bees conversation with chat that has never had. Okay. Like, I'm not. I know I have the mustache for it, but I'm not your actual dad. Like, yeah, too late. You're already on a TikTok talking about how you do not care about consent. No, I do care about consent. I think it's funny that they that attempted murder, though. There's a difference between choking and choking someone out. I ain't trying to make her feel like she's in the octagon with Khabib. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you're choking someone in bed, you're like, you, you try to kill them. That's how it works. <laughs> like, you're... Yeah. <laughs> You're hitting him with this. The f <laughs> You're putting him in the the the, the chokehold, <laughs> the headlock. <laughs> anyway, I want to move on to the cult of Jared Leto. Stuck in a life or death situation, and the only way to escape was to guess how old this man was. What would you say? Jared Leto 50. is fifty years old. Let that sink in for a minute. But I do know that. Why is it that Twitter seemingly lost their mind after Jared Leto presented a Grammy to Olivia Rodrigo? A seemingly innocent interaction with dark roots that only some are aware of. Jared Leto began his acting career in 1992 in the television series Camp Wilder, but really hit the limelight two years later with his breakout role as Jordan Catalano in My So-Called Life. It was clear that he was a heartthrob and had acting talent. A combination that would allow him to star in Hollywood cult classics like Fight Club, American Psycho, and Requiem for a Dream. Jared Leto is known for being a method actor, aiming to show real and raw emotions in his roles by throwing himself into the world of the character that he plays. Sometimes he gets it right, other times he falls flat on his face. One of his earliest demonstrations of method was in Prefontaine, a 1997 biopic about the legendary distance runner. Jared Leto is most notably known for his Oscar-winning performance as Rayon, a struggling transgender woman in Dallas Buyers Club. Method acting, traditionally known as the Stanislavski system, was developed as a way for actors to combine the outer and inner theatrical sense of self by physically embodying the character's experiences. Today's actors must look to Moscow at the beginning of the 20th century to find one of the great theatrical figures of his time, an actor, stage director, teacher, and founder of the legendary Moscow Art Theater. We're watching The Cult of Jared Leto by Philion, whose uh, content I much enjoy. Let's continue. This is Konstantin Stanislavski. Before his death in 1938 and after, he was an enigma. Successive generations have either venerated him or discredited him. A constant source of controversy, he has been nominated with Einstein and Freud as one of the three true visionaries of the century. Others have denounced him as a charlatan purveyor of mumbo-jumbo. One thing is undeniable. Stanislavski, his theater and his acting system found immortality even as the world around him was being torn apart. Although method acting is a legitimate way that many actors get into character, it's oftentimes used as a selling point for modern movies. Usually, headlines are run showcasing the extremes that some of these actors go to in order to prepare for their roles. It's cringy and oftentimes embellished or fabricated to stir up hype. This is one of the main reasons why people hate Jared Leto's Joker, but We'll get into that later. If you're able to separate Jared Leto from his acting ability, it's no secret that he's successful on the big screen. Parallel to his rise to fame in Hollywood during the 90s, Jared Leto would start a band with his brother Shannon. They would name it 30 Seconds to Mars. If you grew up during this time like myself, you can probably remember The Kill playing on every alternative radio station in the 2000s. 30 Seconds to Mars would go on to have numerous breakout hits as their style shifted from edgy to pop. This is why many 30 Seconds to Mars fans are nostalgic of their original music but cringe at their new stuff. They continue to create music around vague relatable themes such as struggle, love, life, death, and faith. Did 30 Seconds to Mars dominate any genre? Probably not, but they were insanely successful in creating a cult following that is now bigger than ever, known as the Echelon. 
The Echelon is what 30 Seconds to Mars fans collectively call themselves. Not only are they obsessed with the band's music, but also the themes and messages prevalent in all aspects of the community. Members of the Echelon refer to each other as part of a family. From an outside view, the Echelon is just like any other stan group. And the reality is, stand groups are cash cows. Jared Leto knows this and perpetuates the us versus them dynamic to increase rapport with his fans. It's one of the many ways in which he breaks the audience artist wall without actually having to do much and reap the benefits. Each member of the Echelon will go as far as to follow the band around the world, making sure to attend every tour event possible. 30 Seconds to Mars even has Guinness World Records for their seemingly endless tours. Their logo is a triangle ad with a line through it which you can find on almost any of their illuminati dun 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 work and on leto himself twice in 2009 the band released merch which said yes we are a cult although this is supposedly an inside joke between jared leto and his super fans it's a slippery slope when given the context of jared leto's reputation if you def jared definitely would have had his own waco compound of acting and music didn't work out what do you mean he already did that he literally did midsummer already like went to a island and shit and and did the midsummer bullshit already find cult as a group or movement he held has together that. by a shared <clears throat> commitment to a charismatic leader or ideology then the echelon checks all the boxes and it certainly doesn't help his case that he literally looks like jesus in 2015 jared leto started camp mars a malibu retreat where fans can experience the red flag over red flag for the record this is what i'm talking about i'm very familiar with this as well obviously because i'm fascinated by like psychotic celebrities and and the weird shit that they do and most importantly about malibu which is a hellish place on this planet it's a beautiful place it's a like a it's like a, a beautiful kind of far away area that's still close in proximity to los angeles but somehow super far at the same time and everyone that lives there is insane everyone the band on a closer level. Camp Mars included outdoor activities, live performances from the band, and a chance to meet Jared Leto himself. Packages ranged from sleeping in tents to VIP lounges, and the prices increased accordingly. Camp Mars was a huge success, and after 2015, it became tradition. It would ultimately evolve into something much, much bigger. Mars Island is a three-night all-inclusive getaway on the private island of Obanyan in Croatia. Think fire festival, but drugs and alcohol are prohibited, and Mars Island actually happened. Sober people, yeah. That's who I want to party with. Packages include yoga, water sports, sightseeing, and two 30 Seconds to Mars performances. Prices start at $1,700, where you probably sleep on a banana leaf, and go up to an undisclosed amount if you opt in for the Phoenix package, <coughs> which is probably where you sleep next to Jared Leto himself. I wish I was kidding. That sounds all fun and dandy, but I don't know about you guys, I would much rather stay home and get some quality sleep, which is why today's video is sponsored by Helix. Helix Sleep makes premium God damn that's a better bait than anything i could have ever put together okay holy shit video on mars island there's a tradition known as the church of mars where jared leto actually performs in a cathedral while totally not acting like a cult leader one of the nights in 2019 consisted of a white night where everyone dressed up in white and sang kumbaya by the fire once again jared leto leans into the cult accusations by being self-aware about it let's all pose for a picture to mess with the media except self-awareness doesn't make it any less of an actual cult. And one glaringly obvious observation is that most of the people here are women. I thought this was strange too. One of the package add-ons for your luxury stay in Croatia includes a tattoo service, so you can get a tribal marking of your favorite cult leader. That's awesome. Mars Island is an experience like no other. That's fine. Jared Leto lives his life like he's on Mars. The man is detached from reality physically and figuratively. He's been riding his breakout success for over two decades, and it doesn't seem like it will ever slow down. If you really study Jared Leto in the media, he has a history of acting like a self-entitled celebrity with a god complex. At the start of the pandemic, Jared Leto posted this gem on Instagram. He was on a 12-day silent retreat and didn't know that COVID took over the world. He is also well-connected with mega brands like Gucci and This Walking Nightmare. Have you ever seen celebrities completely abuse their power by making interviewers oh, no. uncomfortable? I've observed. Oh no, Vin Diesel! Uh-oh, chat. You know what this video is about to be. You've seen it many times. Misbehaving. I, I popped the Vin Diesel video over. Turn it on. Get you, give you a little...
look see you know that's how you know Philion watches his stream no this is a very common meme on the internet i don't think he saw it here but Philion does watch the stream yes um that many celebrities get off on preying on women in front of a camera they like to push buttons be inappropriate and see how much they can get away with by trying to charm or Jared Little's personal photographer in the chat. I worked with Jared Little, 30 Seconds of Mars, as a personal photographer for three years from 2016 to 2019 and worked in their last Camp Mars event. I can confirm with mods if needed. Holy shit. Seduce. When in reality, they are playing a rigged game designed to feed their own ego. Yeah, I don't think he can probably no. reveal Thank shit. You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to answer that by asking a question. What doesn't turn me on? For a long time, can I squeeze your mank? Uh, and I, I get there at five in the morning. Okay. And I go so straight to work. Está agarrando la mano y me estoy muriendo. Don't let go. Don't let go. That's my trick. That's my trick. Don't let go, please. What's your sign? Do you know? Leo. Really? What are you? Hot. Hot. That's nice. Let me guess. Stegosaurus. You really? Yeah. Sagi? No. What? Pisces. I think it's Stag. Yeah. You're perfect. Film hinted at a sexual relationship between the two of you. Did it? Did it? Is that what you took away from me? I don't know. What do you think? It's kind of like a Rorschach test, I think. What did you think? I'm thinking, yeah. Really? Yeah. Dirty birdie. You're just kidding. We're joking. We're joking. Okay, okay. Bro, Jared Leto literally is has gotten away with it because he's attractive. I think that's it. Like that's it. That's the only way. That's the only reason why he's gotten away with it for as long as he has. And for people saying he's not attractive, like, I mean, he is. He's attractive to a lot of people. I believe that Jared Leto and other celebrities are never really challenged on this type of behavior for a couple of <laughs> Okay, now I want to f him. Jesus Christ, chatter. ...of reasons. Sounds familiar? What are you talking about? I don't say shit like that. What's wrong with you? Jesus Christ, if anything, you can say I'm too much of a f incel because I, like, routinely don't say things like that. Number one, cameras are rolling and the interviewers have a job to uphold. The spontaneity that will ensue directly after challenging a celebrity is too much of a risk. Number two, they don't know how to react because it's awkward. And number three, sometimes the interviewers play into it because they are actually starstruck and attracted to the celebrity, which reinforces this type of behavior. I haven't finished here. This work yet That's to fine. be done. That's have fine. you Maybe have you, you had it into her eyes? They're absolutely I mean insane. They're <laughs> gold and blue and oh my I God. was thinking the same thing. Can I we how to speak to ladies? Jared Leto is fully aware of his talent and looks and he uses it to get away with everything. He makes it a point to always touch women, bring them in close, and bask in the tension in front of other people. He appears confident because he truly believes that he's untouchable. September 12th, 2005. The New York Post runs an article that states, Jared Leto likes some young. The 33-year-old Requiem for a Dream actor, last seen squiring Ashley Olsen and Lindsay Lohan around town, has been aggressively pursuing many of the teen models shacked up at the Maritime Hotel. Leto, who booked a suite at the Meatpacking District hotspot while he was in town with his rock band 30 Seconds to Mars, has become infamous for calling and texting some of his underage objects of desire. There it is. I don't understand what the fuck is wrong with these people. Like, you're 33. Why are you texting underage girls? The f like, there is a there's a level of like weird, right? When you're above 30, as I am, there's a level of weird when it comes to even over 18. But like, it's it can't be that difficult to find someone at least over 18. You know what I mean? But you can still keep it weird, brother. But like, on top of that, keep it legal. You know? Like, how are you gonna just be like? It's like anime. The way I think about it is exactly like anime, where Zelda doesn't have to be 17. You know what I mean? They, she's not built like she's 17, but they specify she is, okay? And it's like, why? Why is she 17? Why couldn't she be 18? Why couldn't she be 19? But they're like, no, no, no. We are going to reinforce that Zelda is 17 years old. You didn't have to do that, but you wanted to. And that's exactly what this shit is, which is like, dude, just... Like, even if they're 20 years old and you're 30, that's like, you know, not great, okay? Why do they have to be underage? Do you understand?
You get what I mean by that? Several times a day. He's been approaching all the girls and inviting them to his shows. Girls from IMG, Elite, Next, and women are staying there. And Jared has been hitting on all of them. He's a serial texter. He is constantly texting these 16 and 17 year old girls. It's really kind of creepy. In 2011, Jared Leto makes a fool of a man sitting during one of his shows. This is completely uncalled for. Hold on. <coughs> Hold on. Hey, buddy. Hey, yo, you, with your fingers in your chin beard, what are you sitting on your ass for? Huh? What? This is the 30 Seconds to Mars show, okay? If you can't stand up, you better be up off your ass right now, you hear me? Does he understand what I'm saying to him right now? It turns out he's like disabled, right? He's in a wheelchair or something. No, don't look behind you. I'm looking at you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Oh, thank you very much. In 2013, Jared Leto held a promotional contest for his upcoming album, Love, Lust, Faith, Dreams. This contest was called Hashtag The Sleepover, in which five lucky fans who pre-ordered the album would get to sleep with Jared Leto. Yeah. This was, of course, accompanied by Jared Leto's sad attempt at humor. You what? do know I sleep in a coffin. I will admit my bed is more like a hotel than most. In 2015, James Gunn, director of Guardians of the Galaxy and The Suicide Squad, posted a cryptic video on Periscope. The exact contents in the video are unknown as it was deleted the very next morning by Gunn himself. But accounts recall ranting about Jared Leto for being an overall asshole and sleeping with underage girls. He posted this the next morning. Good morning to Bogota, Colombia, and sorry to all of you around the world who saw my ambient field periscope session last night at 3 a.m. Yes, I erased it. In 2016, Jared Leto admitted to sending beads and used condoms to fellow cast members of Suicide Squad. Now, how about the gifts you gave everyone? Rats, bullets, a hog. Where did that come from? Don't forget the uh, beads. Who did you send beads to? The used condoms. You did not. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was... It was Step back, it, friend. You can't just say used condoms and we're just going to like... You know, it, I know it's a family show, but we can, worry, we can educate people here. At least they were used. Uh, Who did you send used condoms to? Oh, everybody. Yeah, we, we, I got that. Jared, Jared sent... Wait, wait, um, wait, we can't just skip over that. Yeah, yeah. You get a used condom. What do you say? What do you think? You, you know, you say Jared has gone full... Bro, he's like, he's like trying to do like method acting, but it's so cringe. It's just like, it's not even edgy. Also, Will Smith slapped the wrong guy, okay? I think if he had slapped Jared Leto, everyone would have defended him. Like, no one would be like, oh, I can't believe he did that. Everyone would be like, oh, no, that's 100%, you know, you're, you're deserved. Keep my condoms out your mouth. What? Why would he say that? That doesn't even make sense. Okay, dude. All right. Joker. Jared, he went, he went full Joker, you know? And the rule generally is never go full Joker. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> That's ironic. He then later denied all of it and said it was just one big joke. What exactly did people get wrong about the Joker? I, I mean, I just think that there were some things, you know, that were mentioned about like gifts and the fact that I was giving used condoms to people, which was not true. We can say that right now. That it is not true. It was not true. <laughs> and what are you going to do at that moment? You can't even... It doesn't matter how loud you, you shout or hold up a sign, you know, with your pants off in Times Square. People are going to go with the story that they want to run. May 16th. I mean, you said it, though. Like, you didn't even attempt to do damage control. You added the condom and beads. What? Bro, he literally added. Like, the other guy was trying to be nice and being like, oh, it's crazy. Like, what are you giving them and he was like condoms use condoms and beads that's what i'm giving them i'm giving you use condoms and beads 2018 
Dylan Sprouse or Zach from Sweet Life of oh, Zach I remember and Cody this. tweets, Yo, at Jared Leto, now that you've slid into the DMs of every female model age 18 to 25, what would you say your success rate is? This tweet seeming be fair, he said 18 to 25, and that's uh, much nicer of Dylan Sprouse to say rather than 16 to 25. It came out of nowhere. Why would Zach from the sweet life of Zach and Cody know this sort of information? And two, why would he blast Jared Leto on Twitter for thousands to see? And interestingly enough, James Gunn responded. He starts at 18 on the internet. We know that Jared Leto is creepy with girls. We know that Jared Leto has gotten with fans. Oh my god. Oh no, look at that. Look at that. Hey, two two musicians that also both participated in like, you know, teenage teenage rom-coms that uh, have a tendency to text underage girls all the time. Look at that. Look at that. Add DiCaprio and you got the trifecta. How dare you? Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't anyone over the age of 25 but he doesn't go below 18 and that's creepy but not illegal okay remember that it's always creepy but it's never illegal drake on the other hand and jared leto have uh you know crossed over that line regularly like they're out here they're out here living the libertarian paradise life We know that Jared Leto has a twisted sexual side. He literally sings about it in his music. Trying to compare Drake to Jared is dumb. The Millie texts were sus, but nothing says they're sexual. Drake's not. Drake's, uh, you know, interactions with underage girls uh, does not revolve just around uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Didn't Seinfeld date a 17-year-old? Yes, very publicly so, as a matter of fact. Dating ain't shit is weird. I'm 26, and the idea of dating someone sub-21 feels gross. Okay, dude, I don't care. We're not having this discourse over and over again. Now all these, like, Little Zoomers are going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I can't, like, it, it's the number one conversation. It's the number one conversation on the internet that, like, Zoomers love having, okay? There's creepy, there's weird, there's illegal, and, like, really f***ed up, okay? Illegal is really f***ed up. I've always told Leto was a freaking creep. It's not half your age plus five, it's half your age plus seven is the rule of thumb. But it doesn't matter, it's not like a law or anything and plus once you hit 25 it's over you know all hell is just my, that's my that's my rule of thumb the golden rule is half your age plus seven okay which is still irrelevant you know what i mean because these things can be these things can be you know situational and different obviously always you know it has to always be legal but once they're 25 it doesn't matter like i'm never gonna be like oh i can't believe a 90 year old dated a 25 year old like yeah the 25 year old knows better than the 90 year old mother shut the up it's the Zoomer version of N-word arguments. Yeah, Zoomers love having that combo over and over again. You can probably guess which lyrics I'm going to pick out of well, Up you, in the Air. Oh, I'll be, oh, oh I don't, I don't um, know. Surprise me. I'll wrap my hands around your neck so tight with love, love, love. Yeah. <laughs> Quite erotic. Is it? Um, tell us a little bit it's more. It's funny that you would take it that way. About, well, tell us what the song's <laughs> about, if that's not what it is. Well, I, I think, uh, what is it they say? Um, everything is about sex, except for sex. Sex is about power, right? <laughs> and articles have- Wait a minute, that's literally Francis Underwood. The Frank Underwood take about- been written with sources claiming that Jared Leto choked a woman out without her consent. It's important to note that Tumblr posts fantasizing about sleeping with the band muddy the water of actual evidence against Jared Leto. Is Jared Leto insufferable as a person? Yeah, anyone can get behind that. There's weird, probably shouldn't do that type of behavior. And then there's illegal. Where Jared Leto falls on the spectrum is unclear. Decade long rumors- I like that his assessment is the same though. There's like the creepy, the weird, the illegal and immoral. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's, you know, it's just, that's how it is. There's a spectrum of uh, different kinds of uh, choking without consent, AKA attempted murder i mean i don't think jared leto i can't believe i'm saying this because i do think he's creepiest but i don't think he was trying to murder that person okay <laughs> like i don't agree with anything that he's done but i'm pretty sure that <laughs> that is still completely abhorrent behavior don't misunderstand me that is really important in these sorts of situations okay but I don't know what's going on. Is this like COVID brain or something? What the f 
Wow, defending an attempted murderer? Number one rule as a virgin is to never talk about sex. You can only embarrass yourself. Yeah. It wasn't that funny. No, it's it's pretty funny. I mean, I don't know how you could choke someone and out and not think they could. Wait, what? Okay, stop. Stop talking about this. Stop. It's okay. You don't. Don't worry about it. You're right. You're you're right. Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. <laughs> okay, okay. Following him across two different career paths is not a good sign. And neither is this one. Let me fix that. That was... That was great. That last part was awesome. Oh, no. Okay, can't wait to see Pichu and Keemstar and Jared Leto together at high school girls sleepover. Innocence is a virtue, chatters. No, it's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful that... I mean, I'm on Twitch. I... Sometimes I remember... Sometimes I got to remember. Now, <clears throat> not every instance of choking is an attempted murder, okay? I'm just going to point that. I'm just going to say that. You should always get consent. That was a great video by Philion, okay? The Cult of Jared Leto. Um, but <laughs> choking without consent is bad, wrong, don't do it. <laughs> That's all I want to say. Let's just end it there on that. Uh, that note, we end it on that, okay? No reason to add additional things to that conversation. <laughs> I don't want to have a birds and the bee talk with a chat that I don't want to have. I don't want to have the birds and the bees conversation with chat that is never had. Okay. Like I'm not, I know I have the mustache for it, but I'm not your actual dad. Like, yeah, too late. You're already on a TikTok talking about how you do not care about consent. No, I do care about consent. I think it's funny that they said that attempted murder though. There's a difference between choking and choking someone out. I ain't trying to make her feel like she's in the octagon with Khabib. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you're choking someone in bed, you're like, you, you try to kill them. That's how it works. <laughs> like you're, you're, you're hitting him with this. The f you're putting him in the, 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 the choke hold, <laughs> the headlock. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>